We'll preview it on a cream shirt color. And now we don't print the highlight white, but we print the black. The next step is to do tweaks to our design. Typically, T-Steps will get you within 95% of where you need to be. It does all the grunt work, and it does the separations in less than a minute to 30 seconds, and what would take an artist without T-Steps three or four hours. Now, the design looked good on a black shirt. On a light shirt, I think the black's a little weak, and now we're going to do minor tweaks. And it is time to just be bold. I'll click on the black channel. I'll go to what's called Tone Curve, Image Adjustments Curves. And I'll take and I'll boost the curve a little bit and bring that black in. Looks good to me. I might actually click on the red channel, go to Image Adjustments Curves. Some designs need no tweaking. Other designs need a little bit of boosting. It's hard to make a design that is photorealistic work correctly using off-the-shelf plastisol colors. This is not CMYK, so it's much harder. I'm on the yellow channel. Let's just pop that yellow and see what happens. Well, it's too much, but you get the idea. You can see on screen the way it's going to look. In fact, watch the blue. I've used this before, obviously. If I click on the blue channel, click on Image Adjustments Curves, and pop that blue, watch those beads come out. So you run the separation, and then you do minor tweaks and adjust it based on how it looks on screen because the program displays the image the way it's going to print, and you make minor tweaks, and you're all set. The next step is outputting films. In Photoshop, any channel with an eye on it prints. So if you put the eye on every channel, it'll print all your films out. I'm putting the eye only on the black channel, and I will click on Outputting Simulated Process Color. The program prompts you and tells you that it's going to need to have you output the films to a printer with a RIP, a raster image processor, that will convert the image to halftone dots. And you want to set it for a 55 LPI, that's the frequency of the dots, and an angle of 25 degrees, and elliptical dot. And so that's a help screen. And so we go to the file pull down menu, and it has fallen off the screen so you can't see it. But one of the options is print or print with preview, depending on your version of Photoshop. And it shows you a sample of the image here, what it will look like. I'm just going to say scale to, to the media. You would select your printer or your RIP driver. You would make sure that it's set for output. The default in Photoshop is color management set to output. You can tell it now to print registration marks, labels, calibration bars if you want, and you can see them on the screen here. And then you click on the little button that says Screen. And this is where you set for the halftone line count. You uncheck Use Printer's Default, drop this window down, and it shows you all your colors. And for every color, you will change it to 55 for the frequency of halftone dots, 25 degree angle, elliptical dot. Now, if by chance you have heard over and over that you use different angles for this type of work, you don't for simulated process. You can use all the same angles. So you would change every color to 55 and 25 ellipse. You would do it to all the colors. You will say OK, and then you will press the Print button. And out of your printer, whether it be an inkjet or a laser with a rip to, to create the halftone dots, will come your films, and you come back and print all the films out. If you don't have a software rip for your printer, because halftone dots are traditionally made in the printer, not really made in Photoshop, TSEPS has a routine that will automatically convert each of the channels to pre-done halftones that can be printed to a non-rip based inkjet printer or laser printer. And it's a little, you have to, you have to read the menus on this. You click on convert simulated to halftone dots, and it tells you what's going to happen. And it tells you it's going to make a number of files called separation 1, separation 2, separation 3. And it's going to place these files in the samples folder under the TSEPS folder on your hard disk. It also says it's going to duplicate the file for you. If you go to the samples folder under the TSEPS folder, the files are here and they're called separation one, separation two. We'll just open up separation one. This is the black file, the black separation. And this has been half toned. If we zoom in on it, it's already been half toned, ready to print to a non-rip based printer, just any inkjet printer or any laser printer.
And then lastly, screen print the job. If you click on screening simulated process color, these are just help screens that say for best results, use retentionable screens. Our screens could be pre-stretched, but they should be about 25 to 30 newtons. Put the underbasin highlight on 180s to 230s. For some of you, that is high for a dark for a light color like white. Just trust us and buy into it. And it says put the top colors on 280s to 355s. Most of the samples I have are on 230s for the underbasin and 305 for the top colors. And again, if these are higher meshes than you're normally used to using, these are the meshes you want to use. This is how you get nice bright prints on dark shirts. Now you need to make sure that you have a screen making capabilities to hold every dot. You need to use a direct emulsion, use thin coats of emulsion, uh, expose properly, try and hold the dot, and make a really good screen. You'll discover that screen printing this stuff is easy because it's fairly forgiving if, as long as you hold every dot on the screen and set the press up in good tight register. And that is how simple it is to run killer separations and prints using T-seps.